if you can please also tell us uh, who you are uh, just before uh, asking the question or making your comment. Can I have some minutes? Uh, we minutes? do have uh, uh, 17 minutes for the uh, for the. 17 room. minutes. For, yeah. So, so I should be short. Yeah, please. Yes, and I have a few minutes. I try to clear my mind, but it burns inside too. Uh, I'm Thomas Kvirak. Uh, I want to talk now as a part of the activist left, which I think is very important uh, because from the activist left it doesn't work. I think a lot of things doesn't work in civil society political movements because even in the refugee welcome campaign with now 100,000 members in a few weeks, it was activist left people who actually kicked off and then a lot of ordinary people come. And also we have proud traditions like the Palestine movement, with, uh, which I also was involved in uh, with Lina, you met her some years ago. It was activist left. Uh, I, I don't have to mention a lot, but, but what's really happened? Uh, the act, when the activist left either collapse or fail, everything collapse in regards of building a solidarity movement in a political sense. And this is actually what happened uh, to my great disappointment, oh, not only with the Syrian revolution, but actually with the entire Arab Spring in Norway. I, I was really disappointed coming with the Egyptians in January in Oslo and it was very, very few of us from the activist left supporting these Egyptians. On the other hand, a few of us who came, we brought these Egyptians with us in anti-fascist uh, actions, actually, they came because they remembered. And now, this year, uh, some the Syrian revolutionary flag was visible in some anti-fascist very engaged in anti-fascist anti -fascist activities this year against the Pegida and with the Palestinian banners and the Syrian revolutionary banners. Of course, thanks to people like you, <laughs> but still, because making connections. Well, but there is some poison on the activist left. Uh, I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, and I, please, this does not apply to the Norwegian help. Care, but, but there are some people making the rest a bit confused, I think, making this uh, complication of the Syrian question. And this has been a very hard uh, struggle to convince people. And then this space arrangement, really, you do a great job now. And I think if we want to make a material support, we need activists who are organized and uh, have political awareness. And I know Syrians have been working a lot to make some awareness internationally. And, uh, but I think maybe the refugee welcome campaign will open up some doors. But I think the Syrians are now also have to organize a lot to inside these movements to, to make more awareness because actually a lot of us on the left we are I'm sorry to say we have failed in this matter. And thank you. Uh, thank, just you try. Yeah. thank you very much for your comment. Uh, you have to yes yeah, please. I hope it's not the wrong kind of question. Uh, there's uh, of course the headline was what kind of supports to see needs. And I think we all agree that there's one kind of support that you don't need, which is all the foreign fighters coming to your country. Uh, and uh, just, sorry, foreign? Uh, the foreign fighters coming from Europe and coming from the Middle East. And I'm just wondering if, uh, it's actually to all of you, um, how, uh, of course, it's difficult to say because it's hard to do service, but, uh, service in Syria now, but how do ordinary Syrians? Uh, feel about this? Do they feel hijacked by the movement coming? Uh, and also, to what extent ISIS is Syrian driven, whether it's you know foreign driven? Uh, and also, the last part of the question is, what are the tendencies when it comes to movement within Syria? Um, 
is there a more tendency within the army to defect, to actually stop the barrel bombing from within? Uh, yeah, so. Thank you. Uh, I, I suggest if you allow me to uh, uh, let two or three questions uh, be just posed and then you can uh, respond to gain, to gain time because I see two hands already, both of you three hands. I'm not very well for No, I, I, I remember, don't worry. Uh, you, you have your... Uh, Before you, before you start uh, asking, there is a last question here, and then we will make a second round, so you'll be the first. Please. My name is Joshua. I have two questions, one on a very local level and one on a very international level. So I'm um, the first question is actually a whole can answer that. Because if you're talking about uh, Let's start with uh, the questions about uh, foreign fighters arriving in Syria, or how do Syrians uh, see them, and uh, ISIS, is it uh, Syrian driven or it's led by, by uh, foreigners? Uh, and then about uh, the army, whether there are tendencies to for, for defection or not. What would you like to uh, yeah. uh, Let me begin from the second question. Uh, ISIS is, um, uh, was manufactured and or was born in the Iraqi laboratory after the American occupation. It is made of, uh, it's composed of Al-Qaeda, uh, which is a Salafi jihadi organization, uh, uh, which is in turn composed of uh, Saudi Wahhabi and um, Egyptian uh, Qut beast. Uh, 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 well, Alfred Shan of the Islamist, very extreme. Uh, he was uh, in jail of Nasser and he was executed in jail in 1966. So uh, there was a um, phase under, under, under torture and uh, 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 in jail for thousands of Islamists. There was a process of radicalization in Egypt. So, well, to make a long story short, uh, Wahhabi Saudi and this uh, radical Egyptian. But the main uh, element in ISIS is from uh, Saddam's regime. The uh, officers of security and military of Saddam Hussein after 
the, military, the, the, the army was disbanded uh, after the American uh, occupation. So ISIS is not, uh, I mean, it is mainly an Iraqi phenomenon with some of its archaeology related to Egypt and to, uh, to Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, not, there's nothing uh, Syrian, there's something Syrian and Jabhat al of course, which is related to uh, Al Qaeda, but not in ISIS. Um, ISIS is uh, uh, the, the capital of ISIS is the uh, Arata, which uh, I am, uh, which is uh, my native city. Uh, uh, our uh, my family house is occupied now by a mujahid from Uzbekistan. My brother's house is occupied by another mujahid. I don't know if, uh, from which country. So uh, and it is a known fact that uh, uh, ISIS killed. 700 of the uh, uh, local population uh, in their zone because they resist that. So it is, I don't mean that there are not Syrian supporters of it, so, sometimes, and who, especially those who were related in a way to Saddam's regime in the uh, 1980s and 1990s, so it struggle between the two regime, two Baptist regime, are. Uh, 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 among ISIS, but there's not, not leaders. The leaders of ISIS are mainly Iraqis, and uh, th they have three levels of uh, supporters. Leaders who are Muhajirin immigrants, and then Ansar supporters who are local people, which are second class citizens. And then the uh, uh, general uh, population of Muslim, general Muslim population who are the third class uh, uh, citizens. So uh, uh, the, all the leaders are, 90% uh, at least of the leaders are foreigners. Uh, yeah, there, there are other parts of the question before we move to the... Uh, I think uh, I answered. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the detection in the army, do you want to I comment think, on yeah, that? I think uh, the, this, uh, Start from early days, actually. Well, no, not I would say start from when exactly the uh, Syrian regime Im uh, implode army in oppressing the movement. Because for the first few months, the uh, Syrian regime tried to uh, depend uh, more or less mainly on the security uh, forces uh, and uh, and also the Shabiha, the thugs. They are, I don't know if you know the word, it's. Uh, I think uh, later on it was obvious that uh, the movement was really. Uh, uh, going, uh, growing bigger and bigger, and he, uh, the regime needs more troops and more, more, uh, and to contain it, or to uh, actually to oppress it and to contain it. And then the, we we had more troops from the army on the ground, and I think that was a turning point because the deflection started from then. And actually, uh, if we are speaking about how the revolution uh, m was militarized or moved, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, a graduate uh, gra moved gradually, sorry, from the peaceful uh, to. The, but the turning point was the army deflected, because those who deflected were uh, brutally targeted by the regime for the reasons, of course, because the, uh, I mean this is an institution that been always uh, owned by the regime, and for me the army in Syria is more like this is me. I'm not saying it's not, not an academic description. It's like a militia. You know? It's really uh, it's a militia working for the regime. So to have deflectors. And those who were uh, deflectors, are, the majority were not from the elite troops because the regime has elite troops, the security guards, and the uh, fourth division, for example. These are elite troops who are uh, more well armed and, and trained, and uh, and uh, they are led by more closer uh, persons uh, or next of kin for uh, the president and stuff like that. So the deflectors were uh, mainly at the beginning from the areas where are targeted by the oppression. So the soldiers found themselves face to face with their relatives, maybe not directly relatives, but people who, who can identify with uh, easily. And and then we had what we was called the uh, uh, the the, 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 the movement uh, that that doesn't last for long because th this core uh, later. Uh, became the Free Syrian Army, if uh, no, uh, But yes, I mean, at the beginning, really, uh, the deflection of our army, which 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 uh, which became notable, and I think today one of the maybe clear facts uh, why I think there is no way for Assad alone, at least, uh, or even with support of militias from Iran and the Iraq, and, uh, 
and Hezbollah to regain power all over Syria, geographically speaking, is the lack of troops on the ground. Because I think that, uh, that a lot of people deflected from the army, and uh, those who are still uh, loyal uh, are mainly those, again, uh, from the elite troops in the army, and uh, who are built their loyalty uh, during a long time based on uh, complicated facts uh, on, uh, to do actually with, with benefits, uh, economical benefits, and also with, uh, with also uh, Ethnic facts. Sectarian facts, sorry. On, yeah, yeah. So to to uh, also comment on this Lyman Assad killing the officer. In the uh, yes, I mean it was. Yeah, I mean uh, I, I think this is uh, this is. Uh, thank you for brought this uh, for bringing this uh, because I think this is a, 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 a very I'd say brilliant example of how really uh, the regime works. It's it's a, it's a combination of a, a family thing related with the capital, with power, with army, with security, uh, and 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 uh, I mean before dis disrespecting the other uh, Syrians, they, the, the regime disrespect uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's sort of loyalists, loyalists, loyalists. <laughs> and that, and it's not that that answer, uh, accident was really uh, notable because actually uh, the officer was apparently I didn't know him in advance uh, before sorry, it, uh, he was well respected, and as you say he was also from uh, from a region which is uh, very uh, well known to be loyal to Assad regime. Uh, I have to say because of sectarian facts, uh, and so his assassination, uh, the way he was killed by this uh, young. Uh, 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 yeah, from my sad family was was too much even for the royalists to accept it. But then, unfortunately, it didn't uh, it didn't grow because I think the uh, 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 fear factor and and the fact that uh, for for the loyalists uh, uh, the regime uh, after what happened now after after uh, four years and a half. Uh, uh, it became the only maybe uh, shelter against uh, against uh, the anger of, of many Syrians around. You know. And of course, uh, you have this uh, exaggeration of, of, of uh, uh, they are already scary for the IS and the like, but there is a lot. You, can, you cannot imagine how the, the, the phobia is among the lowers of the regime. Uh, and, 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 and using this propaganda to say that, okay, you know, we are not the good guys, we are not super good guys, but uh, who else you have? If we are away, so you have IS coming after you. Uh, yes, you want to comment on Russia and Putin's plan uh, before uh, Rana can answer uh, the question? <laughs> Well, I want just to add something to the, uh, your question. Uh, the the Slim Al Assad, the one who killed the officer, was taken to court, and the judge found him uh, uh, no, mentally, not mentally, not. mentally uh, and he uh, was released, and he's yeah. now again he 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 regained his senses and he's okay now. <laughs> and the threatening, uh, there is all the all another crime. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure I understood the question about Russia. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, it's no secret that Russia uh, uh, supported the regime from the beginning, and I think, but I, what I want to say is that the new thing is not that Russia stepped down in Syria. The, maybe the new thing is that it is getting some mandate, some international mandate, I'm afraid, from the US and uh, maybe other information powers to be um, the ugly face that do the ugly thing for them. The, I, I don't see that the Americans are uh, angry about this or yeah. unhappy about this for the first time in history, and maybe since the Bolshevik Revolution, the Americans are happy that Russia intervened in a country and they the And there's a coordination with the Israelis too. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, Syria now is given, after Iran, uh, after Iran was the uh, pa patron of the Syrian regime, uh, now Russia is a patron, but uh, the Americans will maybe exercise uh, 
than uh, with kind words, but they are <coughs> my feeling, and this is not secret. I think all people know they are happy that they did this. On the uh, rural, urban youth that are the majority of society, with people who are pension, how are you going to deal with that? Okay. Um, well, I wish there was a golden solution. X, Y, Z, do that, 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 you get that, that, that. Um, um, I can I can tell you my thoughts, and I can tell you what I've seen from civil society organization, what works. Um, and beyond all these divisions, you have a class division, families don't talk to each other, uh, you have tribal divisions, you have division of every, uh, every aspect you can think of beyond religion and... Uh, uh, all these other issues. Um, so uh, I think a first layer is fear. So and knowledge if people don't know about each other. And this this is partly the case why many are still supporters of the regime. They don't know the rest of the population. They have been in their own bubbles. Um, um, so the number one is fear and the number two is knowledge. But then you want people not only to uh, to have knowledge and communicate. If they, um, that's what I saw. What's working on the ground? If people work together, eventually they're not focusing on their differences. They're focusing on what puts them together, and and bit by bit the differences will start becoming tackled. But when you just want them to sit and talk, they're coming with the identity of their differences. They're not so. The starting point is, is not leading to that. So at least that is working. Uh, looking at the bigger picture on what's happening in Syria now, governor rates are. Uh, it's it's really very difficult to move from one area to the other in Syria, and communities uh, of different sex are migrating to their areas. So already you had entire cities of one religion, uh, one tribe, but now it's becoming a lot more. Even the international community, Russia is taking its people, uh, Armenia is taking the Armenian given nationality. So each, um, even with the help of the international community, this segregation, and I've been hearing of talks of fragmentation of Syria that, okay, there's a sectarian war, you know, just break them up and this would give peace. But uh, I, I don't really think that's the solution if you, if you and um, civil society has been doing beautiful things in terms of working together, especially at the beginning of, uh, of the uprising where there was space, but the more, the more the space shrinks, the less this is possible. So what I want to say is, again, expand this uh, space, and the number one thing, decreasing the arming and um, uh, stop barrel bombs, really. I mean, this comes as a uh, number one uh, starting point. Uh, we still have one, I think, last question, uh, two last questions. Uh, yeah, I was told that the session should end soon. Uh, but anyway, uh, there is another session that will continue also with this debate on the civil society just after this one. So those who didn't have the opportunity to ask the questions now, we can do it later. Please go ahead, and then your last question. My name is Ali Uji. Yes, you want to vote to for the science partner? So I have a question. I have two questions that I have to tell you So related to this opposition, the unity in opposition. So this is, I think, a big challenge. That, uh, Due to this uh, sectarianism, the division of sector, sectarianism like here, Sunni. So, like, uh, if we, if you consider the example of a uh, revolution in Egypt, we have the European leader, this moment and Baradi. So he started at the same time, very, you know, like he left. So he left or something. But he was the like point of center. So in Syrian case, I, I don't think so. I mean, what do you think about this? Is there any like any actor or any leader who can emerge? Okay. Because. This is the thing that is still the conflict on, and also this is still there. So it means these things are like post conflict uh, site area. What do you think, uh, Dr. Zayn? You and the. Uh, uh, I'm just the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you can miss, uh, please, your, your question. Yeah, um, this is a question about forming and holding a majority in civil society. Um, mm -hmm. There's an interesting uh, link between that that was said by Rana in Syria uh, and what's happening in Norway with refugee welcome. Um, in Norway, the dynamics has already changed. There's the municipal and district elections, so uh, there has been a lot of change. Uh, forming a new majority, perhaps, in Norwegian politics. Um, but we see in the movements, I'm a project leader of uh, Refugee Welcome in Oslo, and Paolo, who is next to Oslo. Um, 
that there is a strong tendency to go towards humanitarian work because they want to remain united and have the initiative on the go, and they don't want to start discussing all the political facets of this problem. They just want to help the Syrians. They want to get all the other problems out of the way to help. And so um, there's a strong tendency to keep in this on a humanitarian level and less on the um, no by zone of political questions than uh, in Norwegian civil society. Okay. And not to leave anyone frustrated, please, uh, with your uh, final Yeah, just a very brief question. I just wonder if you could just give us some reflections on what could be the potential role of the Kurds, the Kurdish areas, in the fight against ISIS and, and Assad. Okay, great. So, you have one question about leadership, that there is no Syrian from Faraday. Muhammad Barat appeared for a few days and disappeared. And second about the uh, uh, solidarity here, that it's not political, rather humanitarian. And finally about the Kurdish crisis. Please. Yeah. Uh, I would have rather have guessed. I think it's just. Uh, I think it's it's not uh, because I, I as I said I moved recently to Berlin and I also because of other reasons I went to Switzerland and to Italy and I was encountered by the same uh, which I think very valid question also about that I mean there is now a growing uh, awareness uh, towards uh, helping those who are coming and uh, sometimes yeah it's, uh, let's I'm trying to play the devil advocate I mean let's not get distracted by political discourses. And because those uh, who are uh, arriving now, they are in a very bad uh, physical and psychological situation. And I mean, and I totally agree. But I think uh, I don't. I, I don't want to speak on behalf of my colleagues here. But I think what we try to explain here is not like you start tackling political issues with the refugees. I mean, I mean, definitely you know more than me in this type of works, like humanitarian and even to how to deal with the traumatized people and stuff like that. It's not like to have political sessions with who are coming and not to, uh, uh, I think, yes, what you are doing is the most uh, important or the priority now on the ground, concretely, is to help those, to, to help them to uh, integrate as fast as possible, to, 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 to address their uh, uh, primary needs, to try to, to provide uh, uh, the things they miss, and they miss everything, I would say. But I think you as an activist also, I think, that, uh, parallel to that, I would say, maybe not directly with the refugees themselves, you, uh, I think it would be very uh, strange if you are not thinking about the larger context. You know, just, uh, and I don't think that will prevent you from addressing the, 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 the priorities, the concrete priorities, which is to, helping the, to provide shelter and food and stuff, and maybe later education. And, uh, and I think, but parallel, as, as uh, I think, hopefully, I'm not uh, putting uh, have, uh, huge burdens on you, because you have the luxury of, of maybe. Uh, you are educated. You are an activist. You have. You have. You know. I think you have. The, you have the margins to address uh, maybe badly uh, the core of the problem and to remind people around you, those who are eager and genuine, have the genuine desire to help. That this is part of the problem. It, it's. It's maybe the outcome of the problem. Let's try also to think how we can address the core of the problem. I think it's good, a good thing that we don't have a Barada in Syria. <laughs> we were always uh, uh, proud in a way that the Syrian opposition uh, suffered a lot, but they were living in Syria. Uh, the majority of us were living, in, uh, were living in the country, and we have maybe one of the highest percentage of former political prisoners living in the country that they spent long years and uh, and its a presence. Uh, we don't have a, man, a Syrian Mandela. But though we have someone uh, uh, who was uh, uh, described as uh, Syrian Mandela, a man, highly respected man, who, but he's uh, old now, 85, who spent more than 20 years in prison, uh, in total, Turk, and he's still living in Syria and hiding in Damascus, but he's an old man. Actually, we have a lot of people who uh, uh, either now in jail, we don't know any information about them, or uh, uh, many of them were obliged to leave. Uh, I would like just to mention Fayyad Amir, who uh, uh, was uh, arrested two years ago and 
we don't know any information about him. Jihad Asad Muhammad, who was uh, uh, arrested also in Damascus uh, less than two years ago, and Khalil uh, Ma'atouk, and Abdul Aziz Khayyar, who was, he's been uh, 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 arrested by the regime with two of his uh, uh, comrades for around three years now with no information at all. And he's of Alawi origin, and many people speculate that he, they, Perhaps they killed him because he may be uh, 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 an alternative to Bashar Assad. So uh, um, we lived in, uh, under a regime that always beheaded the, uh, those leaders of the opposition. Or uh, I, I, do, I would like to mention also Raza Zaytuna, who uh, is a lawyer. She, uh, she's been uh, abducted by. Uh, by an Islamist group and my... I think their own people with, with a strong ideology, that's nationalism. For me, nationalism is, is um, another ideology that you uh, use, um, you know, you can't face it with, with religion, uh, I mean, uh, religion, except that this time, it's, uh, I hope that no abuses will be done soon in the name of nationalism. But that's why they've been uh, able to, to fight at ISIS, um, at least in their area, and they they had deals with the regime, they, they were never shelled. Mm -hmm. So they had this kind of security uh, that other Syrian cities did not have the luxury of to create their own alternative in that sense. Okay, now uh, just to remind you that after the session we have, we can continue the discussion on civil society in Syria. <laughs> that tomorrow there is a very interesting, and there is a movie after, in fact, there is a documentary, uh, Our Terrible Country, uh, that is based on Yassin's journey to, uh, from the Ghouta of Damascus to, to Raqqa and then to Istanbul. Tomorrow we have a very interesting program uh, where you will see another face of the Syrian struggle that is related to arts, uh, artistic creativity, uh, discussion about culture and arts and its role, and uh, you will have Muhammad that will participate, you will have Sana Yazji uh, and the uh, Creative Memory of Syria that is one of the excellent uh, websites uh, where the archive of the Syrian revolution uh, is, is gathered and, and well presented. Uh, and finally I have just uh, one comment uh, that we always forget maybe to, to mention uh, when we talk about foreigners coming to Syria, that on the Assad side there are uh, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of foreigners fighting to support the Assad regime. There is a regime that invited militias from different places to come and to kill his own people. I, I do not call the Syrian people the people of Assad, they're, they're uh, more uh, the enemy, but you have uh, 10,000 fighters coming from Lebanon, from the Hezbollah party to support uh, Assad. You have 12,000 Iraqis fighting in Syria alongside Assad. And now you have a new phenomenon of Hazara, Afghan and Iranian Hazara. We're talking, some people estimate them in thousands, others in hundreds. Uh, so you have more than 20,000 foreigners uh, that are helping Assad survive, in fact, because they do hold most of the important key fronts in the south, around Damascus, and in some cases in other places close to the Lebanese borders. And recently there was a direct negotiation between Iran and Ahrar Sham, that is one Syrian opposition Islamist force, without even using the channels of the regime, because Iran knows that those who are fighting are Hezbollah and other militias, and on the other side, uh, uh, there is the Syrian Ahrar Sham or other groups. So the dynamics of proxy war and of bringing militias outside is not only a Sunni jihadist uh, issue, uh, it's uh, today also a Shia jihadist issue, saving Assad and allowing him, in fact, to stay. Uh, and otherwise, I don't think that we'll be uh, maybe discussing his presence uh, today. As an observer, I'm not Syrian myself. Uh, when I look at Syria, and to answer your question, I see lots of individuals, a huge potential, human potential. Uh, people who are around me here are, 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 are leaders. Uh, people in the room uh, are leaders. Uh, Razan Zaytouni that was mentioned, Riyad Turk, Fida Hourani, who is now in Paris and who spent years in jail and is a leader and was a leader in Hama during the uprising, a medical doctor who received injured people during demonstrations. Uh, when medical doctors used to be killed because they just took care of those injured people. You have lots of uh, possibilities. Uh, the important thing is to stop the violence and the killing machine that is destroying the Syrian society so that this human potential could be capable of, of reconstructing Syria, reconstructing it based on a new majority that is neither Assad nor Daesh. They both 
are the two monsters destroying Syria. You cannot deal with one to defeat the other because each one will nourish the other and will feed uh, the other. Uh, barbarism always can, can meet and coexist while turning the page of barbarism is what I think uh, universally we, wish we should work for. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next session.